Hey guys, how you doing? Murph here bringing you another product review. Today's review is going to be on the Ducky 1-2 TKL. TKL, of course, standing for a 10 keyless keyboard. So essentially you're losing that number pad that would typically be over here somewhere. Just giving you a little bit more of a fully functioning keyboard, but in a more compact size. Compare this to something like the Ducky 1-2 SF, which is a 65% keyboard. This is not really a comparison video, but just to give you an idea of the size difference that you're looking at, here these two are together. So you can see it's about two inches longer, and it looks like it's actually about two inches deeper as well. The height is pretty much the same though. So as far as the size difference, that's what you're getting there. This keyboard is very similar to the other Ducky keyboards that I have reviewed on this channel. Essentially in the box, you're gonna get the keyboard, a key removal tool, a few other randomized keycaps. I have the blue here. A spare space bar that's plain white in case for whatever reason you don't like the design on this one. And a small instruction manual. Now this keyboard here features a pretty standard keyboard layout as far as not only the types of keys, but as well as the size of the keys as well. If you remember, if you saw my SF video, the some of the keys are a little bit smaller, like the right shift and the FN alt, you lose this window key here. But on this TKL, you're getting all of it. So that's gonna provide you with a little bit more functionality. While it does increase the size a little bit, this is still a pretty small keyboard. Like with all other Ducky RGB products, the LEDs on this are very good, bright and vibrant. And you can see here the space bar. This edition here is a Year of the Rat. For those of you unfamiliar with Ducky keyboards, they typically ship with a Year of the whatever, rat, pig, rabbit, something like that. Space bar, and that's just kind of their custom look to their keyboards. I really like them. They look good, but they do have a little bit of a texture to them that some people might find maybe just a little bit annoying. I don't have an issue with it personally, and probably 95% of you will not either, but just be aware that Ducky does ship a plain regular space bar if this etching just kind of bothers you a little bit, or if you want to give your keyboard a little bit more of a generic look. This keyboard does connect to your PC via a USB-C cable, that is approximately 60 inches long, so it's plenty long enough to give you whatever reach you need. And on the back side here, it does feature flip-down feet to kind of give you multiple angles of adjustment. I typically use this middle-sized foot here. One thing that this keyboard does do that I haven't noticed on other duckies, and I don't know if it's just because it's a little bit heavier, but if you slide the keyboard back with the feet, the feet collapse. I don't know if you can see that this side collapsed over here. I haven't really had that problem with the Ducky 1-2 Mini or the Ducky 1-2 SF, but for whatever reason, it's probably just the extra weight of the keyboard. If the feet are out and you slide this backwards, the feet kind of collapse on you and you have to pull it back a little bit. As far as the build quality, again, it's pretty standard across all Ducky products. Build quality is very good. Everything here is plastic, but there is almost no bend or flex or creaking or anything like that in this keyboard. It's very solid. All of the keycaps are double shot PBT for that nice texture as well as longevity. And all of the keycaps are RGB pass-through with the exception of the blue keycaps here. There is no RGB pass through on those, which is something that I wish Ducky would do. I've had two sets of these blue keycaps now, and I also got sent with my Ducky one too many of set of pink, kind of these reddish pink ones, and none of them have RGB pass through, unfortunately. But all of the keycaps that come in blue also come in white, so if you wanna swap out that enter key or any of the other blue keycaps that come with it, they come with white keycaps for you that do have RGB pass through. One thing that kind of sets the TKL apart from kind of the smaller duckies that are shipped out is you can see here on the front of the keys, there are no symbols like the smaller keyboards. And one of the main reasons that is, is because you don't necessarily need it. 
a lot of those functions are actually for stuff that is on this larger keyboard, stuff like print screen, pause, page up and down, home, and delete, all of that kind of stuff. The arrow keys are no longer over here because you have a set right here. And you also have a full function key set here at the top, one through 12. Also, one other thing you'll notice about this keyboard is that the typical way that you switch the color options and the functions on the other ducky keyboards is not there anymore. So function T and function alt T, that no longer does anything as far as the color options are concerned. And that's for two reasons. One, they have moved the color options to function F10. So you can still cycle through those kind of like that. And the other reason being, and this is something I'm very excited about, is they now have a software option for this keyboard, which means you can download the software on your PC, go into the software, and switch the color options from there. And that was one of my main complaints, really one of my only complaints, about the Ducky 1 2 Mini and the Ducky 1 2 SF, is the fact that they don't have software options. Now I'm hoping that maybe at some point through a firmware update of some kind, they can bring that software to those keyboards. But in the meantime, this does have that option for you. You can download it right off of Ducky's website. And I'll show you the software in a moment. It's very basic. There's not a lot of bells and whistles on there, but it does allow you to at least cycle through those color options from your PC rather than having to continuously hit this button to go through all of those. Now, this keyboard does retail in the US for $125, so it's about $25 more expensive than a Ducky 1-2 Mini and roughly $15, give or take, more expensive than the SF, just depending on which switch option you choose. So it's not terribly more expensive than either one of those, and you do get the full functionality of the keyboard, as well as a standard key layout and size. So really, it's going to depend on whether you need those dedicated arrow keys and some of these other keys up here as well. For example, dropping down in size and price to the 1-2-SF, you're still going to get those dedicated arrow keys as well as page up, page down, and delete, which are the main keys that I use over here anyways. It would be nice to have the print screen as well, but it is what it is. You're getting most of those keys and saving $15 and a little bit of space on your desktop but it does shrink down a couple of these keys over here that I mentioned earlier. So it's just kind of a trade-off at that point. You've got to decide which one you want to go with. Just like the other duckies, this keyboard comes in a variety of Cherry MX switch options. It's got red, silent red, brown, blue, and most of the other Cherry MX switch options that you could want. Do keep in mind that the one I have here are the silent reds, and the silent reds do come at a $5 premium, just like the other ducky keyboards. And the switches are great. They perform just like you would expect a Cherry MX switch to perform in sound. So I'm going to give you a quick typing test here. Most of you are already going to know what Cherry MX Silent Reds sound like, but I will give you a quick sound test on this keyboard. So the first test that I'll do is just kind of a typical scenario if I'm writing a report or doing some light gaming or anything like that. All right, and now I'll do a little bit more of an aggressive test. I typically do this because some people kind of poke at their keys, which means they're hitting them a little bit harder, and some people are a little bit more heavy-handed when they game, and they tend to slap the keys a little bit harder. So this is more of a louder, worst-case scenario type sound test. Okay, so that's what the Cherry MX Silent Red sound like on this keyboard specifically. Now we'll go over a little bit of the software and kind of the different color options that come with this keyboard. 
So after you download the software and you boot it up, this is what you're gonna see. And on the left-hand side are your LED lighting modes. You've got several of those. You've got your LED zone customization below that. You can also set up multiple different profiles so that you can switch between those when you need to. And you can also save and rename those profiles over here. And over here is where you select your lighting speed, direction, and colors, and things of that nature. So we'll start off here with Aurora mode. And you can see here, you can kind of select whichever color you want here. You can do a breathing mode. It's kind of what that looks like. Let's do like a green color. Full backlighting mode, which is basically just a solid color at full intensity. You can turn your backlight off. If you prefer to completely leave your LEDs off, you've got wave mode, which you can set up for a single color, or you can switch it to rainbow which is what I prefer. And then you can also see, you can adjust your speed. This is the fastest speed here, or you can just turn it completely down. I typically leave it in here somewhere, probably leave it right here right now. You can also switch the direction, so you can have it wave up or down or coming across from the other side. You've got alpha mode. It's kind of a cool one there as well. Tetris mode, which kind of has it moving down in blocks. You've got color cycling mode, which is just going to cycle through all of the colors at different speeds. You can speed it up or slow it down. Raindrop mode. This is another one of my favorites. Again, you can slow that down as well. Circle rippling mode, reactive mode, which is just going to react when you touch a key. And then before you leave, you want to save it to the PC. In this case, I'll go back to the rainbow mode here. Save. You're, that's going to save it to the keyboard itself, and then you're okay to disconnect on that. And that pretty much wraps up the review, guys. The main takeaway here is that if you're looking for a TKL keyboard, this is a really, really good option, especially now that Ducky added in a software option to go through those color options. This is a really competitive keyboard, even at its high price point. Just like other Ducky products that I've reviewed, the keyboard is very durable. The LEDs are very high quality. The keycaps are great. They come with plenty of extra keycaps, accessories, the other space bar, you know, it just comes with a lot of stuff to make that value even better. If you're looking for a TKL, this is a really good option. I would highly recommend it. If you're maybe looking at a keyboard of a different size, there are other 60 and 65% keyboards out there. Obviously the Ducky 12 Mini and 12 SF, but there's other keyboards from other manufacturers as well that are in that 90 plus dollar premium price point that are still great products and will give you a little bit of extra space because you're, you know, you're going to lose about two or three inches, depending on which one you go with. You're going to lose two or three inches of keyboard here. So really it just comes down to how many keys you need and what your budget is. Overall, I really like this keyboard though, and I'm really happy to see that they added in that software option as well. And that's it for the review guys. If you guys like this video or found it helpful or useful at all, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you guys have any questions about this review, make sure to drop them in the comment section down below. I will get to as many of those as I can. And as always, I'm streaming on Twitch pretty much six, seven nights a week around 930 Eastern. So if you have any questions and you're on around that time and you want to hop over there to ask me any questions real time, I can answer those for you over there as well. I hope everybody watching has a great rest of your day. YouTube, we'll catch you later.